What if we could achieve more by doing less? Welcome to the compelling world of essentialism, a philosophy championed by Greg McKeown in his insightful book, Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less But Better. Imagine a life where you're not overwhelmed by the trivial many, but instead, you're focusing on the vital few. That's the essence of essentialism. In our modern society, we're constantly bombarded with information, distractions, and competing priorities. It's easy to feel like we're being pulled in a hundred different directions. But what if we could cut through the noise? What if we could declutter our lives and our minds and focus on what truly matters? That's the promise of essentialism. It's not about doing more or doing everything. It's about doing less, but better. It's about making intentional, deliberate choices that align with our values and contribute to our overall well-being. Remember, essentialism is not about accomplishing more tasks, it's about focusing on the right tasks. Are you caught up in the trivial many, or are you focusing on the vital few? This question strikes at the heart of the essentialist mindset. Essentialism is all about making deliberate choices and prioritizing what truly matters. It's not about being a jack of all trades, but rather mastering the few that make the most significant impact. Imagine life as a closet. Over time, it fills up with items, some valuable, others not so much. The essentialist mindset encourages us to declutter, to sift through the items and decide which ones are worth keeping. It's about distinguishing the vital few from the trivial many. You see, the world is filled with noise, distractions and endless opportunities. But not all of them are essential. Not all of them align with our purpose or contribute to our well-being. So, we need to be selective. We need to choose wisely. Being an essentialist means choosing wisely where to invest your precious time and energy. What are you ready to give up to focus on what truly matters? This question underlines the principle of trade-offs, a cornerstone concept in essentialism. Trade-offs are conscious decisions to forgo one thing in favor of another. It's about understanding that every time we say yes to something, we're inadvertently saying no to something else. Imagine a scale with your time and energy as the finite resources that tip it one way or the other. When you pour your resources into one thing, the scale tips, leaving less room for anything else. By making difficult yet deliberate choices, you ensure the scale tips in favor of your highest priorities, those aspects of your life that genuinely matter. Essentialism is not about juggling multiple balls at once, but choosing which balls to keep in the air. Remember, every yes is a no to something else, and it's these choices that determine the direction of your life. So, choose wisely. When was the last time you said no to an opportunity? It's a question that might make you squirm a little. After all, we're often told to seize every opportunity that comes our way. But in the world of essentialism, saying no is actually a powerful skill. It's not about being negative or closed off. It's about aligning your actions with your essential goals. Imagine this, you're offered an exciting project at work. It's appealing, it's shiny, it's new. But does it align with your essential goals? If it doesn't, then it might just be a distraction, pulling you away from what truly matters. Saying no isn't easy. It often requires courage and clarity. But when you master this skill, you become the driver of your own life, steering towards your most important destinations. So, the next time an opportunity knocks, ask yourself, is this essential? If it's not, remember the power of saying no. Saying no is a powerful tool for focusing on your essential goals. What is your top priority right now? Take a moment to ponder this question. It's easy to get caught in the whirlwind of life's demands, juggling multiple tasks and commitments. But essentialism encourages us to take a step back, to identify and focus on our highest priorities. Why is this so important? Well, it's about quality, not quantity. It's about dedicating our time and energy to what truly matters, rather than scattering our efforts across a myriad of tasks. This way we can make significant progress in the areas that align with our values and goals. Imagine your life as a garden. You can't possibly tend to every plant and expect them all to flourish, but by identifying your priority plants, you can nurture them with the care they need to thrive. The essence of essentialism lies in this disciplined focus, Remember, you can do anything but not everything. Scene script, 
Are you striving for progress or perfection? This is a question that Greg McKeown encourages us to ask ourselves in his book, Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less. The answer, according to McKeown, should always lean towards progress. Essentialism is not about achieving a state of perfection, but rather, it's about embracing the journey of continuous improvement and learning. Consider this, perfection is a lofty, often unreachable goal that can lead to stress and burnout. It can make us lose sight of our essential goals in the quest for an unattainable ideal. On the other hand, progress, even in small steps, brings us closer to our goals, keeps us motivated, and allows us to adapt and grow. Striving for progress means acknowledging that we are works in progress, that it's okay to make mistakes and learn from them, and that every step forward, no matter how small, is a victory. In the pursuit of essentialism, progress is the goal, not perfection. When was the last time you allowed yourself to simply play? Now, this might seem a bit out of place, especially considering the serious tone of the essentialism we've been discussing. But surprisingly, play is an integral part of the essentialist's life. Play, in this context, doesn't necessarily mean frivolous activities or idle time wasting. It's about engaging in activities that bring you joy, spark your creativity, and help you unwind. These could be hobbies, sports, art, music, or just a simple walk in the park. The idea is to refresh your mind and body, to recharge. When we allow ourselves time to play, we stimulate our creativity, relieve stress, and open up our minds to new ideas and perspectives. This, in turn, boosts our productivity and overall satisfaction. It's a cycle of replenishment that keeps us motivated and focused on what truly matters. So remember, play is not a luxury, it's a necessity in the essentialist life. What non-essential things are cluttering your life? This question forms the bedrock of essentialism's eighth principle, elimination. Imagine standing in a room filled to the brim with objects, sounds, and movements. It's chaotic, isn't it? Now, imagine slowly removing non-essential elements from this room until you're left only with what truly matters. Suddenly, everything becomes clearer, more manageable. That's the power of elimination. By letting go of non-essential activities, possessions, and commitments, we create space for what truly matters. We simplify our lives, making it easier to focus, to breathe, to live. Eliminating the non-essential goes beyond decluttering physical spaces. It's about decluttering our minds, our schedules, our relationships. It's about saying goodbye to the excess, so we can say hello to the essential. But remember, elimination is not a one-time act. It's a constant practice, a daily commitment. It's about making room for the essential today, tomorrow, and every day thereafter. Elimination is not a one-time act. It's a constant practice in the essentialist's life. So, how can the disciplined pursuit of less lead to a more fulfilling life? Let's recap the key principles and concepts from essentialism that we've discussed throughout this video. Firstly, we introduce the way of the essentialist. This mindset involves making deliberate choices and giving priority to what truly matters. It's about distinguishing the vital few from the trivial many, enabling us to focus our energy and attention on what's truly important. We then delved into the concept of trade-offs. Essentialism emphasizes that by saying yes to one thing, we're implicitly saying no to something else. We're encouraged to make difficult choices, prioritizing our highest objectives over lesser ones, we also discussed the power of saying no. This skill is vital in the pursuit of essentialism. It's about declining opportunities that don't align with our essential goals, no matter how tempting they may appear. We explored the concept of priority. We're advised to identify and focus on our top priorities, spending our time and energy on what truly matters, rather than spreading ourselves thin over numerous tasks. Progress over perfection was another principle we touched on. Essentialism promotes the idea of ongoing improvement and learning, rather than striving for flawless execution. This approach permits flexibility and adaptation along the way. We talked about the unimportance of practically everything. The myth of having it all is debunked, and we're urged to make choices that align with our values and contribute to our overall well-being. We underscored the importance of play. Essentialism recognizes that taking breaks and engaging in activities for pure enjoyment is crucial for creativity, productivity, and overall fulfillment. Finally, 
We discuss the act of elimination. We're encouraged to remove non-essential activities, possessions, and commitments. Simplifying our lives makes it easier to concentrate on what truly matters. In summary, essentialism offers practical advice and examples to help individuals focus on what truly matters, make intentional choices, and simplify their lives. It's a guide to achieving greater fulfillment and success. Remember, essentialism isn't about getting more done in less time, it's about getting only the right things done.